Welcome to Cooking the Custard with Chaos and Nubius Black, where we cook the food we love to eat and tell you the stories behind it. So, what's on the menu today? Today is something that I seen on television. I wanted to change it up a bit. They were using wild meat, like some kind of rabbit. I believe it was rabbit, and I figured I'll try it with a pork loin. But it's basically a, a baked seasoned pork loin on top of a bed of rice with a honey, onion, carrot, tomato glaze on top. So that's what we got on deck, and then what we had for the drink. Well, I'll dig into my bag of tricks and come up with something. Okay, right. we'll see what it is when we get there. Let's do it. Well, first of all, we're going to show you what we got here. We got a nice half of pork loin here. With, you know, it, it was already trimmed at the store. You can buy this at any store. Uh, you don't want to take too much fat off of there because then it gets dry. So we're going to season this bad boy up before we put it in an iron skillet and put it in an oven at 375. But first, we got to prep some stuff. We're going to prep some little heirloom tomatoes which i started already before we went on and also as we say the flat the fat was where the flavor is that's right and if that's the case we're the two most flavorful fuckers out here so we got some nice yellow ones old school orange and red tomatoes cut we're just gonna half these because of the acid in the, the tomatoes will help cut down the sweetness of the the honey of the honey so we got that we already got the Jubilee carrots. They were using thick cut carrots on what they, when I seen them do it, but I figured I'd switch it up again because I not to mention I had these carrots, so use what you can have at home so you don't go out there and lose your mind over some shit you don't really don't need to do. So we got the carrots, we got the onions. I got a few more onions to cut. I don't know any of those fancy fucking cutting techniques. I just cut it. I figure if I can get away from not having Starting with five fingers and ending with five fingers, I think I done did some shit. So. And that's all I'm gonna say. As long as you get, end up with all your fingers and no cuts. So we got Cut the onions, good enough. onions, carrots, tomatoes. Hey, instead of having a julienne, you better just have baby carrots and slice them in half. Right. And now we're gonna season. This it's very simple. Again, we don't sit there and try to make things too fancy because everything we got here you can buy at any store. So we're gonna first. Season this bad boy up with some black pepper. And if you don't like what particular seasonings we're using, use what you like. You gotta eat it. Tiny seasoning, which is a combination of oregano, thyme. You probably like parsley. Parsley. Or... Liberal. I don't got no measuring. I just go for what I see. And nowadays, seeing is not exactly my strong point, but we're going to get through this. Now, this is a season I like rosemary, but I particularly like it on chicken. Yeah. I mean, you can take a regular whole home chicken, and if you put some rosemary inside that bad boy before you roast them and put some on the outside with a little sea salt, you might get something there. It's amazing. I, these are like seasonings. You know, we grew up with our parents used salt and pepper. That's it. If, if that. So I try to get it all. Speaking of salt, we're going to put some, another some salt. My mom would have seen this shit and ran for the door. Yep. Himalayan sea salt. Pink. Yeah, because I got some of that in the grinder. And, and it tastes better because, and you, you know, it's not as strong as regular table salt. Regular table salt, I can't even really tolerate that, that much anymore. They're my all-time favorite. I believe it's the iodine. Right, right, right. That they put in it. Yeah. Uh, and then we got we get some smoky flavor, some paprika. Some, some, some paprika. Which I didn't realize, just like salt, how many versions of that. Oh, yeah, there is out there. There's just smoke and all that. Other stuff. So now it's starting to look like something. It ain't cooked. 
Don't be like some of them crazy fuckers you see on YouTube eating raw meat. Raw meat and, and worse. Raw meat and Thai pods. <laughs> I saw one where it is like a... Uh, we're to the point where that the kids is that bored. That's what they got to do. So there you go. Take that. My favorite frying pan that I got from the 90. Good enough to hit somebody upside the head with. On Christmas Eve. Yes. If my sister's hearing this, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. And just put a little bit of... Like the virgin olive oil just to get it started. It's gonna say, was that some EVO? We can all use a little lube. And this pan has seen some times. Like I said, this has been in our family for at least since <coughs> I was a baby. So I wish I was as dark and twice as hard because this thing's been around. There you go. Put it right in the middle. And these conduct heat way better than a regular heat because it's an even heat yeah. for some of these non-stick pans, which we're going to use in our vegetables. It's way too much science involved when, when regular frying pan would do you. So we're going to put this in the oven over there at 375 degrees. There. So then, you know... Lubed up and put your meat in the middle. I'll put it in the bottom rack. See if we get it. There we go. Awesome. Now we're going to get ready to start to do this glaze. This glaze. And basically, here's the vegetables that we chopped ahead. Tomatoes, onions, carrots. Up to you if you want to use all of them, two of them, one of them, or none of them. It's up to you because, you know... You gotta eat this shit, not me. I'm just, this is gonna be a first time for me as well. We got two cups of water, boiling, cup of white rice. Simple as that, two to one. You're gonna use your math now for your education. If you're gonna make more rice, if you're gonna use two cups of rice, how many cups of water are you gonna use? Right. Four. <laughs> Rice with a little. We'll get back to that in a minute. Or you could just order your rice from the Chinese restaurant that I was gonna do, but I screwed around and started making this already. So here we go. We got the little honey teddy bear. We're gonna make the sauce right in this nonstick pan. This is something new. Never did this before, so let's see how it works. My wife asked me before we went on, how much honey are you gonna use? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know, honey. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. How much honey are you going to use, honey? I don't know, honey. I think I'm going to use all of it. I don't know. So, yeah, this is... It's already bubbling. And they say what, what you're basically doing... And I never thought about it until I told Terry that, you know, they were making a caramel out of honey. Yeah, it's... And when you think about it, you go, wow, that's pretty uh, obvious. You know, you never thought, oh, I'm going to use this whole thing. What do you think? Well, if you're going to do that, it would probably be better just to take off the whole, take off the... You yeah, can't take this lid off. If you're using all of it. But yeah, but I uh, can't get to squeeze them. You know? Oh, just let it fall out. Yeah, there is still sugars in honey, so we're gonna pop the top off of that teddy bear. His ass is done. There. And what you see in there boiling is just what little water content that was in this. So we're just gonna give it a stir. And it's thin. So we're gonna just keep Stirring it till it starts to thicken up a thicken little bit. Up. But we don't want it too thick because we wanted it to be a sauce. If you know, make it too thick, you probably have to add water to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're just <laughs> boiling the water off. Right, right then now. you're just boiling the water off of what we're doing now. 
All right. So hand me the onions. All right, we're gonna put these onions in here, which is weird. I was like, onions and honey? That's just weird. But but then also onions. at the same time, I seem to remember as a kid a while ago, well, decades ago, yeah, literally, a while ago, that uh, for for some home remedy. Uh, I think it was a relative. She did honey, onions, and I think like lemon. Well, and then say, hey, we're going to use that same remedy as a sauce. Here, 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 drink this and you'll feel better. I'm like, um, I don't know about the honey. Hey, the honey and lemon, okay. So, <laughs> I don't know where they coming in with the tomatoes. The onions. They ain't put tomatoes in your remedy, did they? No. Now that's that's the remedy. Now is tomatoes and vodka. All right, you can give me that in my sans the tomatoes. So basically, all we're doing is just adding this stuff to this sauce. It's hot enough because we're gonna have to put a lid on it so it uses the steam to cook and yeah, caramelize. to cook and caramelize everything. So right now we don't have to really season anything because most of the seasoning is on the meat. And then we'll put some carrots. So it's a lot of sweet onions, sweet carrots, and tomatoes. A lot of sweet. And the only asset we have in here so far is uh, on the tomatoes. So give me a sh little half shot of lemon juice. Half shot, that's later. Yeah, that's a full shot. <laughs> a full couple cup. shots. Shit. Uh, we got the rice going. So now once your rice gets boiling, turn the heat down. We were watching the show yesterday. I think everybody should watch it called High on the Hog. It's on uh, Netflix. Talks about all the influences African Americans have on cooking throughout this country. And you're going to learn some shit. Because there's some shit I didn't even know. You know, about this. In I don't know if he was infamous or famous. His name was Hercules. He was a slave. And he was the head cook for George Washington. And he was such a great cook that he traveled everywhere Washington went to cook Washington's meals. And then when Washington came to Pennsylvania for an extended amount of time before his house got built in Mount Vernon, he brought Hercules with him. Washington, ever the racist that, you know, nobody likes to talk about. Pennsylvania was a free state. So Hercules could have just walked off and left. Yep. So to stop him from doing that, he had to actually keep sending him back, Hercules back to Mount Vernon. And then after a while, he says, okay, I'll give you your freedom. This is how fucked up the founding fathers were. I'll give you your freedom if you teach somebody else to cook like you. And that person I want you to teach is your brother. So to gain his freedom, he had to enslave his brother. How screwed up is that? Crazy, right? I ain't screwed up. That's America. <laughs> Which you're absolutely right. And then there was another guy. His name. What was the other guy's name that start with an H? You remember? Was it the first name or last name? Uh, he only had one name, but he was Jefferson's um, cook. And, you know, Jefferson loved slaves so uh, much he kept yeah. making babies with. Mm-hmm. But he's the guy that the food you like to eat to this day, we've been eating forever, black, white, brown, yellow, doesn't matter. Everybody likes macaroni and cheese. He invented it. It was called macaroni pie because it was baked. Not that shit you boil on a stove like we're doing here in the blue box. He made that old school baked macaroni and cheese that they called macaroni pie. And that's one of the many meals that he invented. Hemmings, yes. 
because it was H and H, Hercules and Hemings. And these guys, to this day, don't get the credit that they deserve. I'm glad that they did this show, so it really shined a light on them that even I knew little about. I knew about Hercules. There's no picture. They said Martha Washington, they have a big-ass library of all of Martha Washington's her cookbooks. They're now saying Martha Washington ain't write none of this shit. She didn't invent any of it. Hercules did. Because her, why would she have a cookbook if she didn't cook? Exactly. You know what I mean? So, watch it. High on the hog. And that saying comes from eating so much pork, you get the sweats. That's called being high on the hog. <laughs> I never knew that. So, when you're living high on the hog, that means you, you're good and high from the meat sweats. So, there. We're going to put a lid on there, kind of, sort of. Turn the heat down. And we're going to let this cook and we're gonna let the meat cook and we're gonna let the rice cook and then we'll be right back with you ASAP all right I got my glove on so don't make me snap my fingers to make sure this thing is done we're gonna check it's hot that's a plus so we're gonna pull it out of here we're gonna let it rest on the table and see what we got it smells good There we go. So that's a lot. That's olive oil and the fat rendered from the pork loin. And hopefully it is not going to be all dried out. So we're going to let this rest. We're going to go over here. Meat is done. We're going to let that rest so it can contract because if you cut it right now all the moisture is going to run out of it and then your meat's going to get dry that goes for chicken beef any meat protein except for fish i don't think fish you gotta let rest mm, fish you don't even want to cook too long no. that's going to make it dry out that's going to make it dry out it comes to any else? like meat protein chicken fish uh pork beef any big bird you gotta let it rest I didn't know that shit until I started watching cooking shows and shit. Yeah, because yeah, because if you, as soon as you take that out and just go and cut it, there's all your, there's all the juice all in this juice, out of all gone, and everybody likes the juice. So, with a snap of my finger, we're gonna be right over where chaos is at, and he's gonna be making our drink. And once the drink is complete, then we're gonna put everything together, and then we're gonna eat it. Go. Whoa. Just got snapped here. Just snapped in. Uh, this drink, the drink this week is going to be a Bahama Mama, or at least a version of it. Hey, we can call it a Wool Mama. There you Who cares? Uh, and what this is going to call for, it's, well, we always scaling up. Big Bad Mama then. <laughs> yeah. So it calls for one ounce. Again, Trading education. I'm gonna be multiplying it. So, so it was one ounce. We're gonna use what? Actually, Three? just do a little bit more. If it's one ounce, make it four. This one and a half. So I do two of these. So I get three. It's three of us. So yeah, good enough. Pick up one. Uh, by the way, it's just a rum heavy drink. It's almost a tiki drink. Is that a man with the golden so gun? You got man with the golden shot glass. <laughs> so that's your three ounces of your coconut rum. That's only calling for an ounce, at least for our measurements, of dark rum. Then you got your last rum of just regular old white. Damn, that's a lot of rum. <laughs> Every, all your drinks got a lot of rum in them. Well, which I ain't complaining. It's, I'm just saying. It's rum heavy. Or rum is more, more or less one of my uh, go-to favorite liqueurs. Liqueurs, alcohols. How much is that? 
This is uh this is gonna be three ounces. So so far, just with the alcohol, we have a shit ton of rum. Seven ounces of rum. And that's done. And then the rest is all just juice. So you got supposed to be two. It'll be four ounces of orange juice. As soon as I can get this open. So we got one. Two and that's just for vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. So we don't get scurvy. Three. And a pineapple juice, or I'm getting a little creative and trying to juice out of a tropical fruit and cocktail. Maybe, maybe even add a little bit of the fruit in afterwards. It's got pineapples in it, plus a little more. So that's why this is going to more or less be a wool mama instead of a, or a big mama instead of a Bahama mama. Because we're adding a little bit more. Two. And the last thing we got. Some skiz ice. We need the ice. Which could have went in before, could have went, but either way, it's going to be cold. Got some ice. And then, splash of grenadine. Just. Red Geraldine? Red Geraldine, just. Damn. Add a little bit of a splash. Yep. Shake it up. Probably could even use more, but doesn't really matter because the color should have came out a little reddish. Could have used more grading, but oh well. Oh, uh, looks like uh, you got a little bit. And then, just in case, if you want, never garnish. But hey, here you can. I'll you can garnish put some fruit this in to make it look fancy. I'll garnish this time. Ooh, we gotta wear good, good clothes. Eh, and it's, it's some fruits for you. Make it a little more healthy, right? And like I said, being that it's rum, it's almost pirate drink, and pirates always needed citrus to prevent scurvy. So the drinks are done. With the snap of the glove, we're gonna snap. And we shall be putting the whole meal together. Maybe now, snap, snap, go. Here we are, back again. Got my nice fancy Infinity Gauntlet barbecue glove that my son bought me for Christmas. So I'm putting it to work. That way I can put my hand on this hot piece of meat. So, against the grain. You can use an electric knife if you want. I ain't thought pulling all that shit out. And you know it's good when you don't see what? <laughs> Blood. Either from the meat or from your fingers. Or from your fingers. I don't even like a lot a bloody piece of uh prime rib. That's just not my jam. A lot of people like it. I, I'm not a fan. Uh, I, like, I like the prime rib medium well. Yeah, so I'm going to say me, medium well, give me medium well. And this well. is probably a good medium well right here. Yeah, yeah. It's not overcooked. As you can tell by the, if you can't tell by just looking at it, you can tell by the smell of it. So I'm going to cut a little more. Yes. And then we're going to go over and put this thing together and see what happens. Yeah, some people like to uh, knock the cow off. Take a slice off and throw it on a plate. Right, mm. and just call it a wrap. That's not me. Alrighty, we're gonna go on to the other side and see what we got. Getting ready to put this bad boy together for the big throwdown. 
ice cream scoop. That works well. Right now it's a rice. No, no it's a rice scoop. cream scooper. I'll put two in there. The rice is the only one that really ain't got nothing. It's pretty much just like a the background singer, I guess, to just hold everything together. You can use wild grain rice, brown rice. It's up to you. I picked regular old enriched white rice. Like I said, this is something that you can do at your own house. So. so we got the rice. And now we're going to get the meat next to right there. I'll bring it to you. So you got the meat. You know, in the movie and TV, that little bit would be what people eat and go, oh, that's great. No, we've done double up on it. Got that in there. Come on, get on there. There we go. All right, we got the meat on top of the rice. And now we're going to get the sauce on there. Woo! So here it is, root reduced down. Got a really good smell to it. Again, never did this before. So, I'm gonna try something with a spoon. How about that? There we go. It's amazing how thin, yeah, I guess the liquid from the vegetables also thinned out the, uh, the, the, the honey. The honey reduction. So that's pretty much it. This is the pork. That has the pork, the rice, the tomatoes, the onions, and the carrots, which is a combo I've never tried before. So when we snap it again, there's going to be time. We're going to be sitting down eating and giving it a shot. See what we think. So here we are. Well, let's dig in. Of course, the alcoholic and he went straight for the drink. Mm. That's a nice little bit of crisp of the pork. Mm, pork. Now I'm a little nervous. But that worked out pretty good. Like the whole carrot thing is kind of like taking me out. But I like it. It turned out pretty good. It's almost like when you cook. And since they're in the same family, yams, sweet potatoes, rhubarb, yeah. yucca, which I've never used before, which I like to try. So if any of you guys know anything about yucca, put it in the damn comments so we can try something out. But the meat, tender, vegetables, done. Not mushy. Rice is soaking up everything. Yeah. Rice is doing its job, taking on the flavor of everything in here. 
This has got to be one of the sweeter dishes we cook. Because pork is a sweet meat. Yeah, carrots are sweet. Carrots. Tomatoes are sweet. And we have sweet onions. And, and honey. You had the honey. Yeah. This is a diabetic's nightmare, by the way. But and the only thing that was sour was the lemon. Drink. Lemon that you really ain't catching. And it, it's, it's probably just being well, balanced out the sweetness and that actually helped break down some of them. Uh, the vegetables as well. Uh, no, you know, you pick a really good drink to make because that takes away some of the sweetness that's in the meal. In the meal. So, I'm gonna put no salt on here. Yeah, everything that was seasoned everything before that was seasoned, stayed in. Didn't need to be seasoned after. I'm gonna try a little bit of everything all at once if I can. But, so yeah, it turned out. Again, I found out this recipe watching a cooking show last week and figured I'm going to call chaos up and we're just going to do this impromptu, even though I've been having issues with my vision, but we got around all that, so now I'm about to get bloodshot and drink. There you go. See, that? that's not even a good sipping drink. That's a gulping drink. Yeah. But, again, very good drink. Very good food. I hope you enjoy the show. Check it out. Greatest five stars. Thumbs up. Gives us comments on the blacklisted site on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe. All those good things. If not, fuck you. <laughs> that's, that's our cussing. We didn't have enough cussing in this goddamn episode. Yeah. But with that, Bon Afro Tea, we'll see you next time. And fade the black. Peace.